Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 4,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 110 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at Powerslam.tv. This is Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boyd came to give him life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop it six feet if they're kicking trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in this on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rule. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit a talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation We got to unleash the power of the pyramid this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Hey. Welcome to One Nation Radio. Let's just do this shit, Rich. What's going on, man? I, I, what the fuck? Oh, boy, I'm, fucking I'm boy. The audacity of world wrestling entertainment. I can't believe these fools throughout Wednesday, throughout Friday, throughout Sunday, all three nights, they have demonstrated why I hate this company. And I'm not going to fake on it no more. I'm not about to try to try to give them no more chances. You shouldn't watch WWE, and I'm talking to you listening to this. They don't care about you. They don't respect you. They hate you, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and yeah. I hope AEW waxes these niggas. My only, my biggest regret about AEW is that they're not running Mondays against fucking Monday Night Raw at this point. Because why not? What do, you, what do they have to lose? <sighs> I don't know. We'll get to AEW later because I really like uh, AEW Dynamite, as you can tell. Yeah, uh, I haven't really it. talked to you about it, but um, yeah, uh, we, we get, and, and there. Thank you guys for so many. Of you guys been hitting us up on Twitter. Um, you know, uh, you guys are anticipating what we had to say about this, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Um, I'm because- not. I don't want to do this fucking show. I, I really don't. Like, I watched this really shitty fucking show that. Started out with, okay, let's start off from the top of this, right? Because, I mean, there were some good things on Monday on the season premiere of Raw uh, until they did that fucking cuck storyline with Rusev and uh, Lashley and Lana. And now, because I have Raw up because I was because they suckered me in, and I'm a fucking, like, like you said, they think everybody's a rubes and marks and, and trick-ass marks and mark-ass tricks. Well, I'm one of those suckers, too, because I saw they were going to do the Kabuki Warriors versus uh, Charlotte and Becky, and I was like, why? If there was one fucking match you were going to do, you know that's the match that, that was, was going to attract me to go watch it. Just and throw James. it on, just in case. I'm like, it might be a really good match. I want to see that. I know and they're going to fucking lose. And James. Who should be pinned there? That's right. Exactly. No one should be pinned. Right. So right. one day later, they're still not learning the lesson of booking matches where you shouldn't be beating anybody. Correct. 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 So, th- th- so I have that on because I'm I just have it on the background right now. So we're talking about the the, the Rusev Cuck storyline. They start off this fucking show where in progress at eight o'clock, like pyro a show opens. I don't even know there was Pyro. Straight, straight to it. Rusev's in the ring. I don't know why he came to the ring. I don't know what he meant to do. He's in the ring. He's fitting for his life against Corbin and Orton. He was able to get them out the ring. On the Titan Tron comes Lashley. Lashley says, this is the third time I've had to recap this fucking thing. Lashley comes because no one watches Raw on our thread anymore. No one in our in our group. I'm the only I'm the I'm the sucker that gets suckered into watching for whatever reason that may have something I want to see. And then I have to recap all the fucking nonsense they have to do. So I'm gonna have to recap this for now a third goddamn time. So 
Lashley comes to the screen. Lashley says to Rusev, I know you know you're familiar with what this robe that I'm wearing. You know it's yours. So that you know that means I'm in your bedroom. You lose that. So he gets under the in the bed, then gets underneath the sheets, then says there's only one thing missing. Lana comes to the screen, gets in the bed, then says, Rusev, all of our sh- joint checking accounts, savings accounts, all of that. Everything in this house, every, all of that, it belongs to me. It's all in my name now. Then Lashley says to Rusev, you know, you shouldn't have spent all that money you've been making on Lana and not sending it back to uh, your family in Bulgaria. Then Lana proceeds to take off her bra while covered underneath the bed sheet. And then they cut they cut away because apparently, you know, it was time for, you know, uh, Mike Adriano or, uh, or Jules Jordan or <laughs> or Casey Calvert or whoever is directing that porn shoot to just say start fucking. So Rusev looks all sad. The crowds like feel so he actually has sympathy. All these baby faces in the world, he's the one that has sympathy. The most embarrassed one, go figure. So he fires up after after like he's about to cry the whole time. He beats the hell out of uh Ordinary Corbin outside, Mashka kicks, uh fall away slams, and uh hit him with still steps, and then he fires up, throws the other sets of still steps around, the crowd cheers up behind him or uh, or fires up behind him and he leaves and then I don't know what they did after that, but I'm just like, this is the dumbest fucking storyline. Like, and this is how they choose to, mo- to open Monday Night Raw after that disaster last right. night. Pay, Let's pay get no, to it. Yes, Jedi mind trick. Those are these are not the droids you're looking for. Pay no mind to the fuck finish. Pay no mind to the fuck finish. So, okay, so that that was just the Monday storyline, right? Get to Friday. Kofi Kingston versus versus Brock Lesnar. Kofi Kingston has been a champion since WrestleMania 35. It was one of the great WrestleMania matches of all time. It's one of the best, very best presentations they've ever done in any in WWE history, right? Come off of that, he was not a great champion. He was good on TV. He had some good stuff on TV. His matches on pay-per-view did not hold up to uh to form, right? Not what you expect out of a champion, but then again, look at our fucking universal champion. Whatever. So, right. he, so they've been hyping this up, Brock Lesnar, whatever else. So they get to the main event. He gets beaten seven seconds and then immediately discarded so that they can go to Brock Lesnar versus Cain Velasquez. And they got to Cain Velasquez by, in theory, in storyline, by Brock Lesnar beat up Rey Mysterio Jr. the night he was going to get a title shot on Monday and... He beats up Dominic, so he, so you know Ray has to go Ray, get big. Homie. Ray doesn't want to fight for himself. Ray doesn't want to you know grab a weapon and beat the piss out of him, even the odds. He goes and gets the shoot fighter that beat up Brock Lesnar in shoot fights a decade ago. Okay, whatever. So what we got on what we got between Monday and Friday was that we got two promoted title matches. And we got seven seconds of bell to bell action out of them. Unbelievable. Or eight seconds, ten seconds, whatever it is. So then we go to this pay per view. The okay, main so, event. Let's get the, to the, it. Okay. Why? Why? Why are we playing with no, it? No, no. This one. This one. I'm gonna do because it's 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 this is my just because I'm so frustrated. The first two matches of this card were great. This show will live in infamy as the absolute zero professional wrestling, Russell crap, what Vince Russo is booking this shit, WCW jokes all all around. The first two matches were great, in particular the Hell in a Cell between Becky and Sasha, and this that kind of effort in that match, and also in the tag match between Harper and Rowan and Brian and and Roman, goes to show you that. These people that are out here busting their ass every single night, making towns for Vince McMahon, that are, and meanwhile, he is plotting and in, in scheming a ways to try to get them over in ways that, in actuality, I don't know if actuality is even a word, are getting them over, making them look like geeks, making them look like non-stars, making them look like people you should not care about, people you should act, actually, in fact, dislike. So... <laughs> Becky and Sasha had one of the great Hell in a Cell matches of all time. 
Um, it is one of the gr- best women's matches of all time in this company's history. It, it was one of the best matches this year. Uh, it's a match of the year contender on the main roster. Uh, it, it was the best women's match I saw this week. Um, and probably the best it was the best women's match I saw this month. Honestly, if we were if we're talking about even including Stardom's uh, uh Grand Prix, this is the best match women's match I've seen all. All of this month. So, Very innovative spots. Yes. They worked hard. They were over. They felt like stars. It was a reason for them to be there. It was a um, clean. It was a definitive vic- winner and loser. And, you know, you can take whoever, however you want. You want to be mad at Sasha Banks' loss. That's fine. But they had a great match. And I feel like you should be able to live with it either way. Yes. And ultimately, they're going to be separated and put on different brands. So, in theory, you could have got away with either one of them winning. I'm mean, fine. Like for me, you know me being um, a person that kind of like the people that keep the people that kind of keep me tethered to still watching this fucked company are the horsewomen. So you put horsewoman versus horsewoman in a in a hell in a cell match. I'm 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 with it and, it, and it was great and it was such an improvement over and and all the things that they planned out or whatever else went to success. Unlike the last Charlotte in in. Um, the first women's hell in match between Charlotte and, and Sasha, that things that things that were out of their control didn't work. Like the table didn't break over and over and over again. They had a flat finish, and it seemed like Sasha and Becky crafted a way for them to make sure that like all the stuff they did was going to be stuff, stuff that was unique, stuff that um, escalated, stuff that you didn't exactly see coming. It, it was great. So congrats to them. More proof that. You know, these people bust their ass and come up with ideas and they because they want to, you know, you know, back in the day or even the people that are doing some of the producing stuff and whatever else events, they still think of these guys that are back there busting their ass and want to make make it worth your money to go put or spend money on a ticket to go watch them or spend money on the network to go watch them kill themselves. They think these people are marks. They think that this current generation are all marks. They all just they want to try too hard. Why they y'all all want their moment? Hard? Yeah, y'all want your moment. Well, there you go. That so anyway. Then you move. So then we move on to the Brian match. It's more simple stuff. Daniel Bryan's a genius. Roman Reigns always busts his ass. Eric Rowan, he's not the best in the world, but. When he's been in this spot in the He'll ring, try he, fucking he, hard. he always <laughs> tries hard. And Luke Harper's been Luke Harper forever. He's always been great. So Yeah, so I was watching this match. match with Jeremy, and I was like, wow. And there was a Luke Harper down Brian sequence. It was like, wow. So they had this dude home for six months, right? And they, right. they just couldn't find anything to do with right. him. Like- yeah, he, he couldn't do a southern <laughs> accent. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so I, 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 that's, I think that's all the praise this show deserves, right? Is, I mean, is there let's, anything else? Let's, let's get to the negativity because okay. I'm here I'm um, here ready for it. All right, so I just I just felt like because this show's going to be so negative, we need to spotlight things that are always going to be forgotten when this shit ends up getting like worst show, of, major show of the year. So, oh boy. Yeah. Um, so Randy Orton versus Ali. Another person. Oh, my God. Ra- another person. Randy or Ali... Is out here bumping from the floor to, or bumping from the top rope to the floor, has a gigantic bruise all over his midsection, trying to have a great match. Randy Orange laying around, not doing shit. Match is slow, no one cares. Why? Because no one even cares about Ali, because Ali's not a star. Randy Orange has been doing this shit for 17 years. Or Correct. on the main roster for 17 years. This is the dude that just got around and got beat, and then Randy Orange busts his face in, and then we was gone, and he ne- got nothing ever again. Yep. And, um,. He tried really hard, and Randy Orton wasn't with it. He had a slow-ass, boring Randy Orton match that we've bemoaned uh, on this show several times. Um, and, and they're talking about on commentary, he's definitely going to win another world title. Look at him and all this other shit. It's like, yo, they are all the way fucked up. Uh, because Mustafa Ali, luckily, he even made the card. Uh, you know, you see what happened to Buddy Murphy. You see what happened to Aleister Black. They right. got these people hidden in witness protection out here. And I can't believe that you know, you have you have the perfect spot for for him to sneak a win, but no, you have to put over Randy Orton o- over this dude for rather what? than for, for God funsies. knows what. Yeah, for funsies. Yeah, yeah. So last the last segment or last sequence of the match is uh, Randy Orton goes for RKO after uh, clearly dominating um, uh, most of the match. Um, Ali slips out of it and does a handstand to get out of it, and then he you know he gets a 
Blitz has a slight advantage for a certain amount of t- for a quick amount of time. He goes for a move that he tried earlier, and he catches a, a RKO out of absolutely somewhere. So that's that's the end of that match. And the way that he's going to get over in theory is that Randy Orton gave him a "Huh, you're pretty good" uh, type of spot uh, as as he uh, after after he pinned him, which I mean, I guess that's supposed to be uh, Shawn Michaels um, after he super kicks Sheldon Benjamin's head off, even though that was a phenomenal match. This was just a match. Yeah. Next! You know, Randy Orton knows how to get him over. Th- th- this was not Cody versus Sammy Guevara. No. <laughs> this, wasn't, this wasn't Cody versus uh, Dar- da- or Darby, Darby Allen. Allen. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. Next match. Have we reached a point the where where, Co- where Cody has to pass Randy Orton? Have we have we reached this this point, James? You tell me whose match you'd rather see. Cody's. Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> this the the student surpasses the teacher. Who fucking knew? <laughs> yeah. So let's let's move to the next match. The WWE Women's Title Women's Tag Team Titles. Match versus I can't even see fucking speak. I'm so fucking pissed about this match. Okay, Alexa Bliss and um, Nikki Cross versus the Kabuki Warriors. Ale- uh, Kyrie saying and Asuka. The, the, Jesus, Christ. you you go. Uh, a one stop I mean. shop for WWE's never ending uh, objective. And shouts out to John from Omakaze, who I'm going to be referencing here. Uh, WWE has a never ending quest, seemingly to turn every single Japanese wrestler into a heel. Um. It was always my fear that eventually they would make Asuka spit mist. Asuka ended up spitting mist like she was the great fucking Kabuki. But why? Because no. they're the Kabuki Warriors. No, but here's why the are they well, the Kabuki Warriors? Because WWE has to throw some stereotypical Japanese shit on, on these women who are beloved. And, of course, their heels out of fucking nowhere. With no turn, with no build, with, oh, just the matches here on game day. WWE, you done it again. Yeah. So, one thing about Asuka is that um, when she was kind of in Japan, occasionally she would speak mi- uh, or would spit mist or whatever else or spray mist, whatever you want to call it. And look, she's she's been a babyface over there. She's been a heel over there. She's kind of awesome as a heel with with the clown paint on or on her face, looking like she's just murdering anybody, right? But that's if you've ever watched. Asuka here, you've never saw any of that. The closest ever you, you ever saw was that when they tried to turn her heel those one or two times in NXT in mean, 2017, it and it never worked because people fucking love Asuka, and they respect Asuka in the ring, and she still has that level of respect in the ring, especially when she came out, right? Um, and, and when she had, got her moment, when she got into the ring and, and got to work. Um, Kyrie is literally one of James, the, Kyrie saying is a heel now. How do you feel about this, sir? It, it goes in line. They turned Daniel Bryan heel. They turned Johnny Gargano heel. They turned, uh, let's see, who else have they turned heel recently? Uh, they turned Bailey heel. Yep. It don't matter if you. It, AJ Styles. They turned, well, I mean, AJ, you know, yeah. he, he's been able to do both, whatever. But, like, my point being is, they will Sammy grab. Sami Zayn. Yep, Sami Zayn. That's another one. They will turn anybody who is one of the all is one of the all time you point at me think of a baby face or a whitey baby face and that's who you that's exactly who you think of. They will turn them heel. Why? Because we can't push baby faces because we're fucking terrible at them. So we have to eventually turn them heel to try to give them something because they won't be geeks. They won't be made to try to get sympathy when they're actually really you think of them as bitches. You look at Seth Rollins. What his biggest problem is? He's a fucking baby face right now. He has to be the top baby face. So we're killing them because they don't know how to. Book a baby face to save their lives. Anyway, let's, that, that didn't let your hand. Kyrie. Kyrie might be, the in ring-wise, the, the greatest baby face I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> just, might just be. Right? I mean, there's Rey Mysterio, there's Daniel Bryan, there's Sami Zayn. I would say for the women, I don't think I've ever seen a baby face I've ever wanted to cheer more that was a, that was a female wrestler ever than Kyrie Saint. She's so likable. She's so likable that she starts to match off. She's doing hijinks to try to get heat. She's not even trying to like you know cheat or beat the hell out of uh, out of out of people. She literally went to do the uh, the sliding D in the corner. Nikki's uh, she walks the opposite corner. That's the, obviously the uh, the baby face corner. Nikki is o- hanging over. She gives her the fucking uh, yeah. yeah. She gives her the fucking three stooges. I I poke and then Millie does sliding D like some like is a, a damn Looney Tunes uh, cartoon. Then after this. Let's let's go to after the match. They do the post match thing where they're talking about like in the locker room about when they got their champs or whatever, and you, it's translating Japanese. And you would never see two more 
two more happy, likable baby faces in your life. Except one has green teeth because she had to spit mist. Why? Because she's Japanese. So, whatever. They, they turned them heel. They did slight little hints in the match. At the beginning of the match when... I can Kyrie tell right did, away. When, when Kyrie did the handshake thing and immediately like took advantage of the handshake, I was like, uh, you saw me put in the, in the message put like dot, dot, dot. Like, what is this? Because uh, I was like, what? this is wonky. And then you see Asuka, you know. Asuka she, kicking extra hard. Yes. Putting yeah, some yes. thoughts on them zingers. Right. And I was like, okay. So they're clearly working heel right now. They're taking they're taking advantage of the ref. Okay. But, like, there was no rhyme or reason for this. No one, this was never, like, they're throwing breadcrumbs that eventually is leading to this. They just woke up today and just say, you know what? I just feel like Sheen today. Yep. Whatever, they're the champions. They're going to have better matches whenever they do get matches, if they ever get matches. This, remember, this is like their second match in since like August on TV. So, who knows? Uh, they're going to have a match on, on Raw against Becky and Charlotte tonight. We'll see how that goes. They have, like you said earlier, no nobody in that match has any business getting beat. So, I mean, you, so you know there's a fuck finish coming or they're just going to beat the Porter will pin Kyrie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> oh yeah, the, the match was okay. Like it was okay when Nikki was in. It was just there when uh, uh, Alexa was in. Alexa's now like doing fake slaps to make it look like she's out here a, a crisp, a crisp striker now. Yes. God bless him. I, God bless her. I don't know. Whatever. I mean, she she tried. Um, she's another one that tries. She just whatever. They put in positions for her to do that when she's not as good as the other girls. And so it's over and over. They hide her, and and Nikki Cross was was a workhorse here because yep. she was in the ring taking them kicks, taking the the Kawada kicks, and most of the offense. While he said the Kawada kicks, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so Viking Raiders and Braun Strowman. When Braun is a surprise uh, six person. Or a about the dumbest shit I've ever seen. OC. This is about the dumbest shit I've ever seen. They do a fucking disqualification on pay per view of a match that had like no, like nothing. It was just literally like, um, you know, reach in the bag, uh, get your surprise, surprise six man tag, literally. And um, you know, they couldn't see fit to pin Carl Anderson. They couldn't see fit to pin the world's slowest wrestler in Luke Gallows. They couldn't see fit. To have AJ Styles do a job. So what do they do? I don't even fucking know what they did, James. They just oh, <laughs> they, they got to a point where like they they all three of them, all three of the club, just basically get in and just uh just beat down on Gallo, not Gallows, but uh Strowman like three on one while the Vikings were outside like taking powders. And it's like okay, so all these tag matches break into eventually and break into four ways or break into six ways or break into eight ways, or break into ten ways, depending on whatever fucking um how many people there are in this match. So, because the one time it breaks into a whatever else one on one or with one person involved getting beat down, which is supposed to be the heat, they decide the ref just calls it. Even though we've seen those kind of beat downs from heels in tag matches ever since the beginning of tag team wrestling you ever saw. Right? Right. So whatever. They they call it and then eventually uh the, the other baby faces get out, make the save and isolate uh AJ. AJ uh looks like he's about to um Hit the final on the forearm onto uh, Strowman. Strowman hits with a punch and, and knocks him out cold. AJ sells it like he got knocked loop, knocked into you know last week, which is funny because right now, guess who I'm watching wrestle right now? AJ Styles. The club versus motherfucking Lucha House Party. No, they had a real good match, but if he's knocked out, loopy and concussed, don't have him fucking go out here. Whatever, it's not real. They don't want to be anything close to real, and then they wonder why people don't want to watch this fake shit. Anyway, so. <laughs> they Keep go going. Out there. They go out here and uh and and AJ sells like he got knocked in last week. He doesn't remember if he's a US champ. He doesn't know what day, date of the week it is. He doesn't know what town he's in. He's he's noodle leg. He's he does the the comedy stuff where like uh Gallows Anderson, get off me, I can walk on my own, and then immediately as after, as he has no support, can't hold him up, he just falls on his ass. Like they did it twice or whatever else. It was a fun little comedy spot and look baby face or heels are meant to be made and uh meant to be embarrassed or whatever else my thing is if you need to get this thing over with uh with tyson fury for blood money for hey, just man. just go ahead and go out there and knock out uh one of them uh one of them this dudes. 
is stupid. Braun Strowman shouldn't even be involved with Tyson Fury. Baron Corbin, your Golden Gloves guy that you like to push on commentary all the time as a former Golden Gloves boxer, should be the one that's in there with Tyson Fury. So he can get beat up by the celebrity. So you can lean on his his uh, actual legit you know boxer thing so it looks like you know is worth a damn. But Braun Strowman, he continues to get shoved into his never-ending um, you know, his destiny, his fate of being the next big show. And that's not a good thing because he could have been so much more. Yeah, you know what his, his problem is? He's always like the third guy in one of these brands. And the third guy is never a guy that never is always them odd man out. Or whatever number he is, he's always the one that's always odd man out. Like the person that's like one above him on the totem pole is someone that's going to get something good. And he's always fucking left out in the cold, like with, with no. With, <laughs> Look, no thermal, no North Face, just out there cold, looking like Shivering. one of them, looking like one of them, uh, looking like one of them junkies in a hard to tell Nas video. Just yes. under the, under, what the fuck were they underneath? Was that a bridge or was that a basement or what was that? <laughs> I think it's a bridge. Okay, I think. he's one of them niggas underneath the bridge, looking cold as fuck. Yes, yes. Ne- next you know I'll be next to a, d- a dumpster fire, a literal dumpster or a barrel fire, whatever the hell. I don't know how they. Well, speaking do that. of that, uh, Baron Corbin's match was up next. <laughs> yeah, so. At, <laughs> They've had three matches. Corbin and Gable have three matches. This is the worst one, by all accounts. So, wait. What do you know? The one I see is it, just like <laughs> yo. So I was watching this with Jeremy, right? And throughout the show, I was editing a video for my YouTube channel, mm-hmm. and you know, I would look up every so often. So I pay kind of halfway attention here, right. and then I just like started looking again. I was like, yo, Jeremy, this shit been going on long as fuck, ain't it? Like. And not, not really. It was like a twelve minute you, match from what I you know what I gather. Sh- it went twelve minutes and forty seconds. Do you know it how shocked felt like I was? it went twenty five? Do you know how shocked I was when I found out this match? Didn't, I thought this match went eighteen minutes. Yeah, I was shocked when I found out that when it only went tw- like thirteen minutes. I was shocked. So. Okay, so the crowd before, doesn't care. Ma- maybe nothing, it's, like. maybe it's because Corbin came out and was trying to. Doing the be- d- terrible heel comedy that's not even like clever, right? So he, uh, excuse me. So he's burying uh, Yabu on the mic. He's he's call- he's lying about what he would do to the Rock or whatever else. The crowd is, I think they're wanting him. I'm not. I don't even don't chanting remember. STD. Yes, at him. yes, yes. Because uh, the Rock, because Becky said to Rock, yeah, you know, Corbin's a super tough dude, and then it's set up to a punchline. I was like, yeah, the, you are in fact. And STD, and then the crowd started chanting STD on SmackDown, and you know that's the rock comedy stuff. We're like the rock's over, so the rock can get to work. But when the rock's not here, we're just like, oh, okay. we left with this shit. Yes, behind. Yes, like this was this was like one of those things where like, th- thank thank you forever, Steve Austin, for the what chant. Like that will be here forever. Like so for the next few weeks, months, whatever else, STD will be around um, Corbin, and it was, it'll just be annoying. So on commentary, the commentary wasn't actually. In my opinion, I didn't think it was over, uh, like the typical bad. It, it was, was annoying as fuck. It was it, annoying. It, hold on, hold on. it was annoying as fuck during this match in particular. Yes, because they would not let this shorty shit go or the STD they, stuff. Yes, they would not let it go. They said it because WWE put that trademark on Shorty G, which is turned into Shorty Gable or whatever. Um, you know, a couple months ago, that story was out there. And it's like they decided we're going to say it 17 to 25 times during this match. Like, who was that to get over? Like, no one. I, 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 what, 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 how does that help Chad Gable? How does calling him shorty anything help get him over? Look. Like, are you going to start selling Look. like, oh, are you going to start selling like teddy bears with like the Olympic singlet? on or whatever else and then we just say he's selling shorty g's and that we is that what we're doing because outside of that he, he, i don't know how gonna, this fucking helps anything he's gonna have to change his interest music to that Nas you owe me where it's just like oh. shorty say what's your price that's that's what you know he's gonna have to come out to from now on I, so I, he ends up beating um uh corbin correct okay so there is some type of ref distraction that gets in the way and then he rolls him up for the victory. Oh, awesome. So so he, he got over as, he a, as him, a star, right? He beat him with a distraction schoolboy. Okay. So what after, happened after that? Okay. So 
after he lost to him in the final of King of the Ring, after he lost the rematch, or actually he he uh, got beat up uh, by a distraction DQ win um, when Corbin hit him with a with the, with the scepter. Then this was the third match, and then uh, he won with this uh, distraction schoolboy. So. There's a match that passed. We'll get to that in a second. But after the post-match, like 10, 15, 20 minutes later, he, Gable's in the back. He says, you know, I'm okay. I, I, you know, he's basically like, I'm embracing the, the short jokes or whatever else because, you know, I, I left, you know, I beat Corbin. He walks away from the interview. Corbin blindsides him, beats the fuck out of him backstage, and leaves him laying. Just in case you started to believe in Chad Gable, they immediately let you know that he's a fucking loser, that you shouldn't believe anything that, that, that happened in the match. And because he's short, he's not worth your energy. Why? The, because there's this tall guy there. It's the fake put over shit. It's like, oh, well, he won. Did he really win? Because I see him on the fucking floor. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that's not that's not putting someone over. Like it's okay to beat Baron fucking Corbin. He's Baron fucking Corbin. What makes it even funnier is he shows up the next mo- the next day to this, and he's getting his ass whooped two on one with Randy Orton, the thirteen time champion. He gets ass whooped by, by a dude that's even cut. What? We can move on. Um. Oh, the long bright spot in the last two hours of this show. The long the only thing that's not trash. Bailey versus Charlotte. This I was, was just bored during this match. This was just a normal, regular, like two and two and three quarters, two and a half star match, right? You expect yeah. much better from them, but at that point in the game, after that previous one, two, like this was like a three, heel versus four. heel match. It felt like and, it was, and, and, and it was exactly what it was. It and was it a, was like a double leg match, like where they were both working the leg, and like Charlotte's flashing an evil grin at her, where she's holding up ten fingers, and Bailey ends up crying at the crowd. And I don't know, something didn't click here for me on this one. It was heel versus heel match, um, except the thing is that like Bailey is, well, the thing is. Charlotte is a bigger star than Bailey. However, Bailey is only like 150 miles away from her hometown. So, so she got to lose. So and you also think of the last pay per view was in Charlotte, and Bailey beat Charlotte in Charlotte. So it's time for you to lose in North California because it's 150 miles from your hometown. It's the dumbest fucking thing. It's so stupid. These people don't. You only. You don't come back early enough or you don't come back often enough to repay whatever hit you got by beating the hometown hero or the hometown wrestler so why the fuck do you insist on beating people in their hometown all the goddamn time like i feel like there's only like five instances i can think of or i not i have to think of it but like there's only one particular i know for a fact happened but like outside of that like there's seems to only be like a few other occasions it's very rare where some they're in a hometown or close to someone's hometown and they win like they were just in Charlotte, like we were talking about. They they beat they beat Charlotte. They beat Cedric Alexander. They beat the hell out of Cedric Alexander with AJ. So I I don't know, man. Like uh, I, okay, I think there was one time where Ricochet beat uh, Corbin a few months ago in Kentucky. I think they were in Lexington. Um, the the real famous one is like the base like a contendership match going into Royal or sorry Survivor SummerSlam two thousand. 17 between Bailey, not Bailey, Sasha and Nia Jax, and you're just like, oh, okay, so Nia Jax is going to beat Sasha in Boston. Nope, Sasha actually won. That might be the only time she's ever won in fucking Boston. But <laughs> anyway, besides the point, like, it's so rare. I'm sure there's a, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's like a few more, but like less than 10 of the last, like, f- let's say five years. So anyway, they have a match. It's a body, double body part match. And like Charlotte ultimately just ends up being a better woman and, and wins. And then Bailey like taps out. And then she like acts mystified like she'd been screwed over. And even though she tapped out, which is like the dumbest shit. And whatever. You know, her, her and Sasha both crying right. at the end of their matches. Right. And being made to be humiliated. And um, 
I don't know. I I, I just wasn't into it. Oh, and <laughs> it, it, it's time for the dreaded. Let's see where they take us here. Let's see what happens. Let's let, let you know. So we'll see what it turns to a storyline. What that means for them as far as them being together or one being apart. There there's a story there and in, in possibly in Bailey. Uh, you know, eventually coming to her senses because she was cheating and she came her own the wrong way, and then eventually this leads to both of them on one brand and they finally had the feud that they should have had fucking three years ago or two years ago, whatever I, I I'm whatever. <laughs> I, this was like the middest of mid Bailey and Charlotte matches you'll ever see. Um, well, I take that back because that match, it was better than the match they had, uh, the previous month, the three minute finish. match. Right. Yeah. But any match that had any kind of length, cause this match went 10 minutes for a 10 minute match. between those two. That's like the worst match you'll ever see those two have. Um, Whatever, like I, you know, I suggest you watch any of the other matches that they've ever had. So whatever. Uh, moving on. Then we get to this fucking abomination. WWE Universal Championship match, Hell in a Cell main event between the champion Seth Rollins and the Fiend Bray Wyatt. This fake Halloween Friday the Thirteenth. I know what you did last summer. Scream Joker ass shit. I'm. We told him, James. I had my doubts that I didn't know he was actually really, really for real. I know they taught people talked about all the horror elements, and but I just thought like it would just be a mask and he would wrestle. No, it has to be some supernatural shit. It has to be some something other than Bray Wyatt in a mask, even though we're still calling him the Fiend Bray Wyatt. So whatever. I mean, the no selling stuff. There are parts this? of the match that I thought I was into, but once they, but there was a certain point where I can't remember put my finger on it, but I was just like, no. And then the crowd just rejected it, and then like, you know, actually I know what it was. It was after. I thought there would have been a nice presentation had they wrapped it up when you hit that first Sister Abigail. He he no sold some stuff from Seth. He hit Sister Abigail, and you're like, okay, in the in the ring, you're like, okay, that's the end of the match. He kicks Seth kicks out and it continues. And you're like, they went too long, and then they kept going and going and going, and then it just turned into like the worst, the worst of Vince McMahon's Vince McMahon's impulses and just the worst. So you say what you have to say. This match was a steaming pile of cooked shit this is minus five stars (laughs) this was an abomination this should never be viewed by the public again this was an insult to every single fan that tuned in and watched on the network this was an insult to the people that bought tickets this was an insult to the people that illegally pirated them i can't believe that these people had more than two whole ass months to plan this because the leak got out there that Wyatt was going to get the title match in the Hell in a Cell. So this was not no, they were backed into this at the last minute. Uh, this is, this is you know, the beginning of a story. No, this thing's been rolling from the second that um, Clash of the Champions was over, even a month before that, we knew what it was. So if their intention was to do this match, I'd like to know why. Because they knew they didn't want to take the belt off of Seth Rollins. They knew they weren't going to put it on Bray Wyatt. So what is WWE really trying to do here? They were trying to fucking work these motherfuckers because they can't sell tickets anymore. So what are they going to do? Oh, we're going to put The Fiend in a title match. So we're going to rip the public off by selling them these tickets. And then in this stipulation match, which you have built up, and slowly been chipping away and fucking over the years. Uh, look no further than last year, and then this year again. Um, this was a match that ended after a comical amount of Seth Rollins finishers. I never want to hear anyone talk about the V-Trigger again. Um, this is like when he he, he uses a fi- his finisher 11 times. He used was 11. weaponry to the dome. It he was 11. used... Yes, I, I believe it was 11 times. And, you know, why it's no selling everything. I thought it was absolutely horrible. This was the 
this felt like WrestleMania 34 when Roman Reigns started kicking out of all those F5s and it became comedy after a certain point. That's what this was. Not to mention, you have the fucking red Sin Cara lights hanging over the ring the whole match. You have Bray Wyatt pulling out the fucking Gallagher hammer out here. Um, and <laughs> they end the match with no finish. Okay, okay, so... For Dylan me, James had asked me if this was WWE's finger poke of doom <laughs> moment. No, 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 of course not. Why is it not? Because they're still going to be making money five years from now. Of course not. WCW like, was still making money in 1999. In 99? Yes. Okay. I thought they were losing money in 99. I no? thought they were making money in 99. So what? What? So you're saying that you think that they were in the black, and then all of a sudden, like the very next year, they lost was it fifty, sixty million dollars in one year, and that was just wrap it up. I we thought they know lost when money something, to, and it's not even strictly a money thing. This is okay. like when you know there's something that's broken in your promotion. Oh well, and, shit! And and that's and the case. Yeah, the, we've had a bunch of those. Like, go back to WrestleMania 34. Why the fuck would he beat Brock Lesnar? Or why would Brock Lesnar beat Roman Reigns? What fucking sense does that make? Why would you? Why would you feel the need to where it was so bad to where like you go to go into that summer? You have to scam your way off air at SummerSlam. You have to scam your way out of a Hell in a Cell finish uh, between Brock Le- or Braun and him. You have to scam your way out of a uh, out of uh, Saudi Arabia by having motherfucking uh, um, Baron Corbin be a be a crooked ref uh, to screw Strowman and screw. Uh, and screw Strowman in that match where he has to kick out of finishes or whatever. I'm, 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 they've, they've done a the bunch of bullshit. The whole company sucks. And this week, this past week, proved it. Do not spend your money on them. Do not come out here and, and, and come in my mentions. Anyone, any, any motherfucker telling me why the WWE is fucking good. From NXT to SmackDown to Raw, they embarrass themselves over and over and over. And what they've done is created a place where people can't grow. People can't, like, they can't grow in NXT, right? Now, they can't be booked correctly on the main roster. And then the fans are just getting fucked left and right with stuff like what happened in the main event with Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt. The writing is bad. The commentary sucks. Everything is horrible about this fucking promotion. I hate it. The I hope th- AEW throws them in the fucking river. The only thing that is like redeemable about this entire company right now is well NXT and at least on their main roster. The only thing that's like redeemable about them is like you know the wrestlers really at deep in their, like you know deep down most of these wrestlers give a damn. They're getting Correct. let down. We are, we are always. It- pro wrestler on on this show right and and we know that if we pluck in any damn near any of these people off this roster put them in a different uh uh, creatively thriving environment with a non-senile person booking um the main event matches with a non-washed up motherfucker like paul Heyman who booking this stuff who who assumes you know he he just has a perfectly spotless record uh, uh, uh a reputation to coast off of from ecw and 1997 who gives a fuck anymore he was washed up during the ronda shit and all he's done is routinely prove that he's not in touch with wrestling today um look there's only so much blame i can give Heyman. like the cooking stuff is stuff that seems like it's Heyman stuff so we're gonna give, so we're gonna give Heyman the blame but ultimately these are still ideas, and just like whether it's Ryan Ward or it's Triple H or it's uh, Ro- the Road Dog or it's anyone else or Pritchard or you know, or even when it was Pat Patterson and and, and Russo and and Jim Ross and and uh, Cornette and uh, Hayes. Ultimately, no, regardless of whatever happens, they throw out in or Jimmy Jacobs. They throw out ideas. They lie them lie about ideas. Ultimately, is going to get filtered down through Vince. So it don't Literally. matter if it don't matter if you come up with a money drawing deal that would that would fix this co- this company uh, and, and and everything, and it would solve a lot of the problems fundamentally. Look, if Vince and I'm not even no, into that fiend no. shit. I'm not even into that fiend shit, right? But there are people that are right? that are really into this right? shit that, that really care about this shit that tied themselves to the Bray Wyatt thing as goofy as it could be. It was like this was the hope they had, right? This, and what did Vince do? Vince fucked those people. This 
not even, there's, there's, you're absolutely right. There's also this. We talk all the time about they're so quick to go from what week one to week two, or sorry, they're so quick to have a, a four month plan for somebody or a two month plan for somebody to get them over, and then by week two or week three, he's already fucking pulled the uh pulled the rug out from under the person and immediately screw it, right? Remember the uh remember when they finally did the uh the ultimate deletion shit? Yes. Right? And they, they were shit, damn near laughing at it. They gave that shit one week. Okay. Vince gave this the commitment of from the night after WrestleMania 35 up to survive up to SummerSlam. He built that shit or whatever else. This is something he committed to. This was the lone thing this whole fucking year. I'm sorry, I'm 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 banging on my desk and that's getting the mic. So <laughs> that was the lone thing this entire year that you could say this is something new. This is something that is uh, unique uh, to what you typically see in WWE. And they're running with it, and people are responding to it in a way, and and it's different, and it's not it's PG still, but like there's a scary element to it. There's an element that's a stuff that is normally not typically you see in WWE because WWE doesn't really do horror, and they don't really do violence that well either, even though it's fake fighting. It had all that stuff in it, and it was meta because like what well, Huskis Harris is talking about how he used to be Husky Harris. Sister Abigail is a play on how lame that Sister Abigail she used to be. Ramblin' Rabbit was a play on how he used to go out there and send that man and go out there and, and go eat two hundred innings like he's a base like he's AJ Pettit or some shit and go out there and just talk and talk and talk. And I mean, you also had uh, the uh, uh, Mercy the Buzzer, which is a play on how he used to wear the the, the Hawaiian shirts like Win and Mercy in the nineties, like all of that, stuff. and then you know Horn Devil Vince. You know, the only thing he's concerned about is the money. Like, all that stuff is so meta and so inside. And it's like, a, a, I don't want to say a love letter. It's not that far. It's not necessarily a love letter to, you know, like, people that are hardcore wrestling fans. But if you paid attention and you all that stuff, like, you, it's a lot of really smart things that encompass a lot of his career, his six years in his company or whatever else. And people responded to it very well. He came out of SummerSlam. Me and you, like we talked about this all the time, we are not big uh, Bray Wyatt fans. We do not want to see that dude have wrestling matches, whatever else. He came out with a, he came out there with that fucking mask on. He came out there with new remix, evil uh, uh, metal music to his theme, remixed up. He came out there with a, with, the, with that lantern he always had, except his actual real face on it. Um, like a face lantern. Mm-hmm. Like, that looks like something. That's like a. He looked like a cool panel or a front, pl- like a or a full page splash in a comic book, right? It looked cool, <clears throat> right? People loved it. People popped huge when he when he went out there and had that demonstration um, against a uh, demonstration because he just demolished up uh, yeah. or uh, Finn Balor. People really liked this stuff. People really liked him being the hell out of Seth Rollins and, and making him scare like a bitch throughout this yeah, whole deal. And Seth Rollins was getting booed every time he hit a finishing move on this dude. The crowd did not want Seth Rollins to win. At all. So, for all those people and all the goodwill this one this one lone character in this whole company, this one whole act in this whole company, this whole year has had, he flushed, he, he flushed down the toilet. Why? Because I'm desperately need something to help pop, uh, to help pop some, uh, to help draw, but I don't want to commit to this thing because it's not my fucking plan. Even though I've been planning it for four months, six months even, it's not really my plan. Like, I'm okay with it, but I didn't create, but it wasn't totally my vision, so therefore I can't completely commit to it. Okay. And one night, they killed Seth Rollins, who has had a role in killing himself. Also, right. Bray Wyatt. They super. Da- I don't know if he's dead, but they definitely damaged him. This is definitely Bruh, like that, that man might be working without a limb right is, now. <laughs> this is definitely like when they beat Braun with one F five at No Mercy uh, two years ago. And then the Hell in a Cell gimmick. Three years ago, I was ready for to never see one again. Mick mm-hmm. Foley ain't falling off that cell anytime soon, y'all. Triple H isn't back body dropping Mick Foley through this shit. Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker aren't aren't bleeding buckets in the ring in 2002 anymore. There's no reason for this match to ever happen anymore. You barely get innovation. When you get innovation, it's like after year gaps that have to do this thing. And they could have that damn near same exact match without a fucking cell uh, that, that was around it. This thing is a the hell in a cell is a mirage. It's an it's imagination. It's you know something that 
Mick Foley once did, and it will never be like that again. And WWE has murdered this gimmick all throughout this decade. What what year you want to start, James? 2011, you want to talk about uh, the Ryback and, and CM Punk into, or excuse me, um, when when uh, John Cena was getting locked out of the cage and, and they were they were having motherfuckers run in all in there. 2012, you want to talk about Brad Maddox and, and CM Punk and, and low-blowing the referees. You got Shawn Michaels in there uh, refereeing the match and deciding to interfere. Uh, 2014, you got Bray Wyatt and his body, his fat body coming out the fucking... Uh, um, you know, lantern light in the middle of, of Rollins and Ambrose 2015. That one was good. That was The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. That's an exception to the rule. 2016, Charlotte and Bailey, um, they had three Hell in a Cell matches that year. They had Roman Reigns and Rusev. They had KO and Seth Rollins. And then they had, um, you know, Sh- Sasha and, and Charlotte. It was like overkill. It was way too fucking much. Yeah. 2017. A- what, what what was in 2017, James? Oh, that's right. That's when they had Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens out there bumping on top of the cell. <laughs> and then Shane McMahon falling off the cell like we knew he would already do. 2018, they have, um, you know, Brock Lesnar come out here for the first no contest. And this is no contest part der. And, and this everyone thought it was a disqualification the whole time. I'm not about to let them make it, quote unquote, better because it's a ref stop. It doesn't Y'all matter. Kiss a ref stop. my black ass with that it shit. It don't matter what the fuck you call it. It's a fuck finish. I don't, Correct. I don't, like, this is not. <sighs> don't literally it, it don't matter what you call it. any other promotion in the world, y'all. Any other promotion. Like, this is not shit that's from 2000. Like, it's 2019. Motherfuckers. Beat somebody. And, right. and this Look, when AEW <sighs> talks about wins and losses mattering, and I sent this out on Twitter, this is what the fuck they mean by that shit. This is what they mean. They mean have the heart to beat somebody. What have they done to Kenny Omega last few pay-per-views? Beat they him. had a vision. They fucking beat him. Right. Like is 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 Seth Rollins too good to do a job? Is Bray Wyatt too good to do a job? Like for for your stories? Come on, man! Like, like, like I, people's not with with this bullshit anymore. And no. I'm glad the crowd let, let them have what they what, what they gave them. Yeah, I mean, I throw the whole pay per view away. Throw your network subscription away. Do not it, it, like if you are unhappy with this shit. Do not get suckered in by these people. Because they are they are operating underhanded on every damn thing you can think of, and they're going to fucking Saudi Arabia again in a couple weeks. So that's the next show that y'all have to worry about. Yeah, don't even do it, y'all. Watch Stardom. Sure, and it's damn sure not going to be anywhere as good as uh, the first two matches on this card. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The show was ass. Don't come out here and cap online. There's no reason uh, d- to do it. And, you know, <laughs> I can't believe that uh, these people have done this. This company hates you. Keep yeah. that in mind. Okay, so I don't I don't even have the show sheet up. I'm just, was there anything else left on the show sheet? Like, are we, going to, are we also going to talk about what else? The other, the Wednesday shows, or what are we going to do? Yeah, let, I, I want to talk about AEW because... I love the show. I thought it was just, it just made me feel so good as a wrestling fan, as someone that is, you know, been invested in uh, AEW from the beginning, even, you know, before the promotion existed with those guys. And it's just like, I see the vision and, and I, I love the vision. I, and these people feel like stars and, and they're going to, um, you know, try to make things matter. You know, there's, they had a couple of hiccups on the show. Um, as far as, you know, time and stuff out, like with, you know, the, the non-wrestling stuff that happened. And, um, you know, they had to skirt some stuff in the main event with the referees. But overall, I thought it was a banner night uh, for professional wrestling between AEW and NXT, even as operating as underhanded as they were. But um, it turns out AEW did pretty much all the same things, but they didn't really announce it, like as far as like the limited commercial interruption and things of that nature. But AEW, where where they have this this thing is like things just feel special, and I don't know how long it's gonna last, but I'm gonna enjoy it as much as I can because it feels like it's a it's a whole new new birth, and it's like you know if WWE is putting that out right, 
all they have to do is be themselves. And that's what I enjoyed the most about the show. Like they didn't come out there and try to do, you know, WrestleMania 17. They didn't try to come out there and, and do and go outside their character. Like, you know, for like they didn't try to put double or nothing on Tuesday. They're like, hey, this is how we're going to start rolling out. And we're rolling out our stories and they're giving us something, you know, to, to come back for next week rather than just like, yo, um, announcing these matches out of nowhere that, you know, is nothing's going to happen with them. But um I, I really loved it, and I'm glad it's here. Yeah, um, this is this is like this was watching the show. <clears throat> it felt like this is the reward for like treating the shit like it, as if it's real, even though you know it's not real, right? Um, if you present the shit as if it's something you should care about, if you can get some like is. It's not that hard to get somebody to suspend their disbelief. Everybody watches some form of fiction, whether it's a cartoon show or whether it's a TV show, whether it's a film, whether it's, let's be frank about it, whether it's your favorite rappers, right? So, <laughs> so for them to come out and, and just treat it, treat it like with with the care that we wish that everyone else ca- uh, treated with, like, you know, the care that they have in New Japan, the care that they have in, like, you know, Hell, NXT, right? Um, in other places. But just, you know, sports entertainment is just such a fucking cop-out way to you to be able to do whatever the fuck you want with no with no uh, consequence. So, it, it was cool how all the... How the crowd was with everything because the crowd believed in everything. Not saying that they believed it's fucking real, but believed in the stories that are being told and be- believed in the presentation, right? So, that was cool. Now... That doesn't mean, like, there wasn't ref that just didn't see, you know, just did not call DQs or whatever else, and they still have yet to explain um, why... why these maybe the, maybe DQs don't exist in this promotion. They, need, they haven't they, called one yet. They need <laughs> Look, if that's ca- the case, they need to explain that. I'm okay. I, I will rock with that if they explain that. Haven't done it yet. And look, to be honest, if they weren't the only company that was doing that shit this week, because when Asuka blew that fucking mist, the ref was looking <laughs> dead, at their, dead in her face. So... This ain't the only company that's, that's out here missing the ref part, right? We also got refs out here saying, oh, you know, <laughs> this isn't you, Seth. Don't do it. Yes. You, oh, I fuck, forgot about you, that. You want to fucking yeah. kill this guy? Don't do it. This isn't Meanwhile, you, Seth. Meanwhile, Seth Rollins is the same motherfucker that is uh, cursed up a bitch through cinder blocks before. Exactly. Come on, man. Remember he was remember remember when John Cena had to save Edge from getting from breaking his neck and killing him, and he said and Seth said he was going to kill him anyway. Correct. He's not that. He's been that guy. <laughs> You know who Seth Rollins' heel character was? He was Marlo. <laughs> oh my god. He was Marlo from the wire. He was uh, he I He he was a bad guy who was ultimately a geek. I have a hard time just going with that because like I never found a single demon quality in Marlo ever. And he was and he was uncharismatic. Like Hill Seth Rollins was all had some charisma to him. Um like there were literally no redeeming qualities in Marlowe, and he was boring. So it's like <laughs> like nigga, I like I just saw Avon, I just saw Stringer Bell and Avon Barksdale. You are nothing. Like you are a like whatever. I just saw Dan O'Brien and CM Punk. You are Seth Rollins. You uh, okay. are not on the if same level. If that's the case, if you want to do that comparison, fine. Fine, sure. Um I think I still think that's a, a bit of an insult to. Uh, I feel I feel like we're still not giving Seth Hill Seth his props, but if that's but it by I get the comparison, I get the parallels now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bro, 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 are you fucking serious? No fucking way, bro. Bro. What happened? Oscar versus Oscar and Kyrie versus Becky. And Charlotte. Charlotte is distracted or is pissed off and gets taken by the ref or takes the ref. <sighs> Kyrie's in the ring with, with Becky. They're the legal men. Becky has Kyrie in the uh, uh, bra- arm arm breaker, the disarm, disarm yeah. by the ropes. Asuka blows the miss right into Becky's face. Kyrie pins Becky Lynch. Now they Kyrie's off to the side. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Live so reactions, Joe. They beat the hell out of uh 
Becky's dealing with the mist. Charlotte starts to fight. Kyrie and Oscar beat up Charlotte. Guess who makes the save? Sasha Banks. No. Bailey. No. Alexa Bliss. And Nikki Cross. Oh my God. And now they're beating after beating after pinning Becky Lynch. Now Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are laying out the heels. What the fuck <laughs> was the point? Are if you're trying to display them as people that are worthy, God. then have them leave after beating up Dave, Charlotte. Turn it. Turn this Becky. poison off, bro. Turn this poison off. <laughs> This is eye poison. They did all of this just so they can miss Becky and pin her. This is the first time Becky's been beaten clean since uh since Oscar beat her at at Royal Rumble, right? She, I know she took a pinfall to lose that other belt, but it was damn near like count. a cash pin. No, no yeah. that, wasn't, that wasn't clean. Like what's it called? Uh, Lacey yeah. Evans punched her, and then that led to the finish. Yeah, yeah, but AW ended up like destroying nxt in the ratings every demo it looked like a damn it looked like white voters voting for trump like (laughs) it was just overwhelming but you know nxt did manage to um you know be popular amongst the geriatric crew uh amongst the folks yeah amongst the folks that are uh you know uh looking for the uh social security check on the first of the 15th you know the the AARP, you know, the ESPN Classic demographic, the short, short <laughs> demographic, the Soul Train, original Soul Train, the Don Cornelius Soul Train uh, era, you know, viewers, you know, these these are the, the demographics, you know, they, they love the NXT, they love the World Wrestling Entertainment, you know. Seems like AEW has a grip on the youth, the the younger folks, the the actual you know the 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 demographics that um, will help their TV deal with their ad split that they have on TNT. They got three times the expected um, number from TNT, which was five hundred thousand, and they did as many viewers in the demo as NXT did total. Um, yeah. So NXT played so under. I'll t- I take that back. Vince McMahon played so underhanded with NXT and made NXT take this bullet um, as we said they would um, in this 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 war. Like, and it's like they made a lot of people choose between NXT and AEW that don't want to. But the thing is, people don't love NXT like that because it's part of WWE. I feel like, and well, I, I think it's two things. I think it's sim- I think it's a very similar to what happened during the Monday Night War where. You had, you know, people thought, okay, well, there's only only people that are watching on Mondays are people to watch Raw. Only wrestling fans are people that are watching Raw. You're about to split that in half now. When it turns out, it's like, not everybody's fucking in love with Vince Man's sports entertainment bullshit. So, yep. it turns out, like, there's actually another group of people that like pro wrestling that aren't in love with Vince's shit, and they decided to watch it, and then eventually it led to more eyes towards both products. And they both had separate and distinct um, fan bases. Like when I think there were like two million people, two million people that were still watching Nitro in his last episode. When yeah. that went off, they didn't just go to WWE. They just stopped watching. They just dematerialized. They just poof into thin air, Vanished. right? With Correct. the vapors. So, um, so in theory, that's kind of what happened here. Like there are a group of wrestling fans. Um, pro wrestling fans that decided to watch AEW, and then you look at the fact that there were, I believe, the first episode of NXT two weeks ahead when they got the jump start. That was one point one million. NXT, I think it was, yeah, it was like one, yeah, one point one, and then and then this week it was it was one point oh, and then nine hundred thousand, right? Yeah, so, so they, they were dropping eleven percent a week, so they were already eroding right, by well, by well, week well, three. Well, hold on, what I'm getting at is they still have nine hundred thousand NXT slash WWE fans. And AEW had a 1.4 million people show up to watch. I'm sure there are people flipping back and forth, right? But ain't that damn many, right? Yeah. So, like, this is a whole. So these are a whole, a whole new audience showed up to go to watch the AEW thing, and now we have a. Sim- it seems like we have a similar version of the Monday of the. We actually have a real live Wednesday Night Wars, and it's gonna be interesting to see like what happens going forward because. The both of these promotions are ran competently, so in theory, 
And I think it's great because both of their fan bases are young in their demo. So they should, in theory, be the ones that are quote unquote making the stars or whatever else and having the youth follow them. And these are going to be like, these are people that are going to be stars in the wrestling business in theory for the next, you know, months and 10, years, 10 to 15 potentially, years if, they, yeah. if they can, if they, if, if they don't change anything or if they don't, you know, or if Vince doesn't get you know, funny with NXT, if they just, if it is what it is, if both these shows are what they are in the future going forward and, you know, adjust when they need to adjust whatever else and are ran competently, we're going to have, we're going to have a good, we're actually going to have some young fans that are going to have kids and their kids will be fans. And we're not going to turn into fucking baseball or boxing or horse racing. So that's good. So you, you that should be the biggest positive of of this entire week is we actually have some young wrestling fans. It ain't just me. Look, me, you, and everybody else is so suplex. Like we are the only people that are sub sub 35 that are wrestling fans. That's, that's great to hear. That's really great to hear. And um, you mentioned Vince like getting funny with NXT. Within 20 minutes, he was already bringing people from the main roster um, <laughs> to, to NXT. So I just have one question, James. Um, who is Brock wrestling on Wednesday? No oh, shit. No, nah, the better question is who is Roman and <laughs> the better question is who is Roman and Brian gonna be wrestling on my own this day? Because you know they, you know you just come out there and dark, they can put Daniel Bryan, they can put almost anybody out there, especially like Daniel Bryan. You know, I was in the original season NXT, and, yep. da, 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 and you know, uh, y'all, you know, the crowd believed in me. That blah 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 blah, and oh yeah, here's Roman. I'm the, you know, here's Roman. You know, oh actually, that probably they. Mm, we know some of the people that go to those NXT crowds. Would they boo Roman? No. I hope not. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Before October 2018, would they have yes. booed Roman? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You, you better believe it. So, 100%. Yeah. So, um, so like, how do you how do you feel about like NXT like taking this this bullet for WWE? Like we mentioned they would be deployed as this weapon and that weapon came up rusty. Like they were, and they were always a weapon though. NXT was always a weapon. Like Ever since they brought in Nakamura and Gunners from like the UK, like like British Strong Style, or bringing Tony Storm um, from from Progress and all the I, all the ICW World of Sport motherfuckers in 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 Progress, like they were pulling them out of there to make sure you know. And they were, look, they brought in Adam Cole and, and Roddy Strong from Ring of Honor. They've always been a whole. They've always been a, a way of them. We're a taking jail. we're taking away we're taking people away. We're taking away talents that we think that we have identified as might be people that could do something for someone else, and they've they've been doing that for years. They've been doing that for years now. Like now, I think for people, it's it it's more. It seems like it's crystallizing. Like right. like we were talking about right. this in 2017. Right. Like this is you know it's you know it's like back to back nor politics. This is like when this is like when white voters finally realize like what party is what when like Obama becomes the president. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like oh we never really thought about it. It's like oh we know now. Uh, yeah, let's just go all vote for let's all vote like majority for Trump. Like regardless of education or or pre or like the Obama like the Obama Trump voters. Like all yes. of a sudden they just came up crystallizing. They all realized it. Like and now it's here um, or it should be here for people uh, when it yeah. comes to this. So yeah, um, I don't know, man. Um, I. I just think that, like, I just appreciate the fact that, like, both of them had great shows. I thought they both had great shows. So, you know, regardless of whatever else, like, that's all I really care about. Like, all the politics and stuff. I just want to see the good wrestlers wrestle and, you know, and, and you know, not be made fools of and, and show how well they can, you know, do this stuff. So, for me, Wednesday was a joy. Um, it was hell to try to get that Wednesday, uh, Thursday copy of NXT, but I damn sure got it and I enjoyed it. And I thought, you know... As a wrestling show, you say, what do I want to watch? Like, I thought NXT had a better show. Um, but you that's not a show that you can just do over and over and over again, repeatable. Like, AEW, even though they didn't do as much um, character work as I would have liked, it had it actually, but it did have some character work and had angles on it. So, um, I would say, like, that is more of a show that, that, that more resembles what, good weekly episodic television looks like than NXT, which is just like Guns are blazing, EL Shirai yeah. versus me, him, uh, Candice LeRae versus, e- versus uh, Shayna Baszler, Riddle versus Cole, uh, 
Dunn versus Stone, or not Stone, but uh, what's oh Birch? Yeah, like so. Yeah. You know, I I um I thought it was a, just a great night for wrestling. Yeah, man. I I would I would be remiss if I didn't mention like all the things that like <laughs> that these that these dudes did to try to like steal like. You know, for to to try to hold AEW down essentially to to handicap them out the gates. I so, just I, I just want to know. Let well, me you can get your point. I'm sorry, but like I just really want to know. Like, is this the same exact mistake that Vince made when it came to his thoughts on the Monday Night War, where he thought that like the only wrestling fans that are out there are the people that watch our shit, and then he's in for Rule Reagan. He's like, oh, where the hell did this? Where the hell did these you know four million, five million people show up for to watch uh, to watch Turner? Where yeah. where are these? Where's this one point four show up just to watch you know Cody shit? Like I really, I really want to know if they're flabbergasted after you know for years you heard there are no young fans. Yep, there uh, are uh, no uh, ca- uh, you know um uh, there are no hardcores that that yeah. that will like carry this. You know, like you guys don't matter. This was like a victory towards that line of thinking. It's like, look, man, you've pissed off enough people. You like, you have left the trail of bodies in your wake. You just unaware of it because you're the fucking, you're the fucking mass murderer. Like, like you, you've killed so many people, you don't even realize that that they're underneath your, like their skulls underneath your feet. Um. So yeah. Uh, so, so they had a two week advantage. They did a pre show for a regular show of NXT to try to get motherfuckers locked in and ready and excited. Right. Overrun. They did a takeover caliber show. Limited, limited that weren't limited. Do you watch that show? No. Dude. Okay. So the first half hour, no commercials. And then as soon as the riddle match ends. They backloaded ends, them, right? During the women's as matches. The, as soon as the riddle match ends, every single fucking match went through two commercial breaks at least. And all of the commercials were long as fuck. When I mean long, I mean long like giraffe dick. I mean, Damn. <laughs> dude, it was, it, was, it was so annoying at one point. Um, I so think that was, was next. That was next on my list. Like the commercials, like all the time was gimmicked. Yep, yep. Just so totally they got gimmicked. the f- fifteen minute overrun. Three title matches. They're putting main roster, loading main roster guys on there. The return of Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, they co opted the wrestling media that day with a tour oh, yeah. of the Performance about, Center and NAC to try to make people not cover AEW. Right. They. <laughs> These people tried to play so dirty, and this is why it was a glorious day on Thursday when I found out AEW waxed these niggas. Like, <laughs> now my question for you is: Do you think the two the two week had start backfired one hundred percent? Backfired on. I mean, by like they if they had came out on August second, just like they would have, they would have gotten more of the more. They would have done before. much better. I think okay. they would have done much better because what what I feel like the mentality would would have been like, well, we already seen them. Like we know that we ha- they have those matches coming, and people know what it is, and, and people don't like the fact that and, and the way wrestling fans are right now. Like I think a lot of wrestling fans operate what feels right versus what feels wrong and what it felt like NXT was doing was wrong. Like it, like it was not like the anti-competitive nature of WWE turns a lot of people off and is just going to push people further in the other direction. Like, yo, I'm right for AEW out here. And, and that has, that is spread and it's spreading like a germ right now. Like I can't wait for Wednesday. I can't wait to watch AEW. Like, it, and especially like combined with what they did to Kofi Kingston, combined with what they did on Sunday night, and then it's just like, yo, where what, where is WWE going as a company right now? Like this is just <laughs> like like AEW showed up at the perfect time. Time could be better. Yeah. So now that I know, do we know for sure that that um that ten to twelve uh replay on NXT or not NXT but on TNT is that gonna be a weekly thing? I don't think it is. Damn. Because I was gonna say, like, I found a, like, I'll, as good as the wrestling was, like, I'll sit through those four hours. That's the four hours you have no problem <laughs> sitting through. Like all that kick-ass wrestling, that's no problem sitting through those four hours. That shit they doing out here and on the on the pay per views, that's not the three. That's not the four hours you want to sit. That's through. That's not it, Chief. That's not the four hours you'll sit through. But I mean, it still is better for me to uh, to watch one one day and. W- watch one the next day or watch one the next morning or whatever else. But, uh, but yeah, so, um, Oh, they also have Wale, uh, come on there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> has like what, like one of the number one songs in the, or the top songs in the country right oh, he now. Does? Yeah. Uh, the on chill song. Okay. 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 I forgot about this one. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, who's on that song with him? Jeremiah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Jeremiah's he's he's I didn't think this was I didn't think this would last this long. Remember birthday song? Do you think he would still be around in, in I mean, 2019? I mean, I mean, you know, you find your lane. Like <laughs> no, I, I, it's a road for has everybody. To, everybody has to find their lane. But what I'm saying is like if you had told me to like hell, even two years ago when he came out with that Wii song, mm-hmm. like he would still be around. I've been like, he's had a better career than I thought he would have. Yeah. Like, cause I listened to his first, I think this was only his first, first album. He had some heat on, on that album. Like the beats are crazy, but he was, he wasn't really like, like he wasn't exactly Chris Brown or Trey songs or any of those R&B niggas is like really like people just love banging. Yeah. 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 He's like, he, he can hold in the road, but like, he's not like, and it wasn't like he was like some incredible songwriter. Like he's like, uh, the dreamer or, or uh, T pain. Even he was just like, Oh, he cool. He cool. <laughs> like, he, like, I would say like the, not the, the comparison to what his career, like you think it would turn out to be like, if he was like nowadays would be like the Jacquees nigga. Like you would think, like, wow. yeah, like That's Jeremiah funny. was like the Jacquees do, but like I don't think Jacquees gonna be around for a whole decade on songs up and right. Yeah, he's just nah. gonna have to, he's just gonna have to be remixing. Yeah, and look, he keep he keep it up. Like Jacquees ain't gonna make it because Jacquees gonna allow to get snatched up by by <laughs> Keith Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you know you all you know you used to be the, the OG with it. I'm like, look, man, I do not wear this. <laughs> look, I do not wear this turtleneck like I sold dope for you to come out here and say like I was an old dude. I will I will grab you right now and, and see what it's about. Anyway, yes. so it, what is else speak, to talk about? Spe- spe- <laughs> speaking to somebody, look, 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 look. Speaking <laughs> to somebody, yeah, One Nation Radio, y'all. Uh, speaking to somebody grabbing somebody, uh, uh, Brock Lesnar grabbed Kofi Kingston's ass out the middle of the air. Um, on SmackDown and beat him in seven seconds and flushed Kofi Kingston's entire title reign um, down the toilet. Now, James talked earlier in the show about the truth about Kofi Kingston's reign. We're not about to sit up here and be like, yo, this was some all-time great title reign. No, it was an all-time great moment when he won the title and then a fairly mundane title run after with matches that didn't quite live up to the billing. He was one of the he was one of the weird like cases where I can't really think of it that much. Where like someone was better on TV than they were on pay per view, right? And and I'm not willing to to go as far as saying like you know he was uh, someone that they'd rather see chase the title than hold the title because what if you gave him different opponents that were more exciting that were right. younger that that was someone that you would actually think about putting him on last with rather yeah. than always in the middle of the show actually treating him like the top champion at some point because with the red belt and the WWE title it's like they they just focus it they, they hard turn it rather than you know in one month you're gonna put this on last like you're gonna put like we saw the Smackdown women's title main event TLC last year when Becky was hot there right. was no reason at some point they could have set it up for Kofi to get hot at some point with a defense like to where he could have went on last like and it, it was it was sad like seeing like him go out like that and then he got that outpour of love from his uh um, you know his co-workers and you don't see that often when dudes like lose the title and remember when he won the title and he was he was celebrating with his family and then you seen this guy grind this whole decade essentially and uh put out a story with him and Dan Bryan that really resonated with everybody for them to just throw it away in seven seconds felt like a gut punch to a lot of us um yeah. and, and and it was just like Y'all really don't respect this dude. And it's, y'all did that to roll right into Brock Lesnar versus a Kane Velasquez. And these, I don't care about MMA. I'm not an MMA fan. I don't, you know, I watch pro wrestling. Like, I don't care about these these people coming into into the sport that we're supposed to care about. I thought it was Dominic when it when it came out, uh, when he came out with Ray. I didn't even recognize the guy. And he has a big-ass knee brace on, and apparently they're doing it in Saudi Arabia. That's fine. I don't have to pay attention. I wouldn't have cared either way. However, Kofi Kingston was just discarded, and they thought they could get off that by just popping this MMA guy in there. But this is not, this is not hot. Yeah, like, and the thing with Kane is, like, Kane was hot for beating Brock, and that was a decade ago, so watch people give a fuck now. Correct. Like, it'd be one thing if this was 2012 Kane or some shit like that. No, this is Kane Velasquez in 2019. Like, 
like he's lost his last match. In fact, I think one of his last matches he had his his knee blew out on his knee just went out on him. He and done. he needs knee surgery. Right. And the crazy part about it is like or not crazy part, but another frustrating part is you saw him in that triple in Triple Mania. Yeah. He's not gonna wrestle like that in WWE. Correct. He's gonna do that fake MMA wrestling and it's just gonna be two big dudes holding each other and slamming each other and um you know, I'm sick of them feeling like their only person that they care about or protecting or making a star is Brock Lesnar. And people are like, what do you want you know, them to do? Brock's a star. It's like, all right, bro, look at every single person he's wrestled. Like, how many people are better for wrestling Brock Lesnar Not at this one. point? Now, who is there one? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking shit. that being like funny. Um, is there one? I'm seriously want to know. Like let's go let, let's go back in reverse order, right? Let's uh so Seth, no. No. Uh Finn Balor? No. I would mm, I would say Finn Balor is so doing so well, he's back in NXT right now. But that's that's them after the fact. Like if you had say after that seven minute match they had, right? I would say I would say maybe Seth. Let's say let's put him in the maybe pile, right? Put him in the maybe pile. Um Before that, that is Daniel Bryan. Daniel and Daniel Bryan, Bryan's, Daniel Bryan's already made. He didn't yeah. need Brock Daniel, Lesnar. Daniel Bryan had to wrestle as a baby face like five days five days after he just turned heel. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's a no. Uh, before that is that. Roman that's Reigns. Braun, that's Braun, Braun Strowman. Right? Fuck Braun no. Strowman. Nope. Yep. They, <sighs> it's seasonal how they up and down with Braun. Like yep. we, build, we build him up after WrestleMania so that we can beat him before WrestleMania. Correct. <laughs> Like they're always ducking, they're always like building him up after so that he can so so that he. So you can know what Braun needs to do? No. He needs to get injured. That's what he needs to do, <laughs> no. and then come back in like he, January. Because if he pull that, then you know what's gonna happen, right? Everybody will never trust you again. Now nah, you like, oh, oh, you got hurt. All right, we'll come back the night after WrestleMania. <laughs> hurt, hurt. <laughs> so, uh, so that's Braun. Um, before that, that was uh, Roman. Roman. Definitely not. No, no. Definitely not. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so AJ see. Styles. A- no. AJ I mean, Styles actually, already made. I think he. I think he was already made. Uh, I think people really respected him. How he? Because that was all that 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 whole. That, I mean, that whole November end of the end of the year thing with AJ was just like. That shit was so inspirational. Like, that man came and saved the title. And then that man went out there and fought Brock on behalf, you know, and people were sick of Brock by that point in time, too. And it had such a great match. Uh, you know, and then that man basically, like, came from behind and to win, you know, wrestler of the year, basically, for, two, for, for WWE main roster. Like, so, uh, I don't necessarily say, bro, they're just now, it's, 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 are they mentioning it's Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt it's now? 1045, and now they're recapping it. Oh my God! Scared, hiding like hoes <sighs> okay. for two hours and forty-five minutes. Right. So let's let uh, let's just okay. So um, before uh, is that that's two thousand eight. 18, no, right? we're in 2017. So what what is that going to bring us to the summer? So that was Strowman again. Oh, Strowman. And then, no. and then it was Samoa Joe. And also, and also, uh, in that four way SummerSlam with uh, when he pinned Roman Reigns, <laughs> Roman Reigns, and that whole summer you can look back and be like, that's the that's literally the tipping point from where like WWE's like uh, popularity plummeted and has never recovered since. And when he beat all those contenders in three months, three consecutive months, so cleaned all them out. So no, no, and no. Um, <laughs> and you go to WrestleMania 33 against Goldberg. Goldberg's out the door. So re- oh my god, is the last person Goldberg at Survivor Series 2016? Maybe, so that's another part timer. That's that's someone that doesn't wrestle every day. That they have to take special care of. These are the only people that are allowed to look great against Brock. And, and, and already- we're gonna begin to we're gonna be getting to them. It would be uh, Triple H, The Undertaker, and those are the only other ones. He yeah. fucking killed John Cena's like as a top guy. Like he finished Cena off essentially Sorta. at yeah. SummerSlam 2014. Yeah, John Cena was never the same. John Cena had to go do something different after that, which was yeah. be the U.S. champion yeah. and do different things outside the top picture. But he murdered like he essentially escorted him out of being a top guy. Yeah, wow. 
depressing when you think about it like that, seeing how many quality years John Cena gave that damn company. So And seeing that like he had his best year after that. <laughs> like, that yeah. Like, that was his best wrestling year two thousand fifteen. Um, PWG Cena, as they say. <laughs> so people people really said that? I didn't know. Yes. They, they they call him PWG Cena. Cena. That's funny. Big yep. move, kick out. Big move, Correct. kick out. Look, this is how we talk about it. If you give enough of a damn and you try hard enough and you put in the time, you will eventually get good at wrestling. And in the case with John Cena, he was already having, um, you know, fairly consistent uh, big matches between, you know, stipulation matches. Like, that last, you know, that 2015 year when he put it all together as far as, like, I know how to, like, have great TV matches, great pay-per-view matches, like, whenever I want to. Like, he figured that out. Like, so we talk about people not figuring out, not getting it. It's like, it's just, there's a lot of stuff in the way and life is going to take experience and life is going to take, like you have the opportunity to be able to like get away from Vince or let Vince like trust your instincts. So, yeah. So we've gone far back enough on Brock, but back to yeah. Kofi, like, <laughs> like what, like what are your, like, well, like what, my thoughts or what's yeah, next? Yeah, well, like, like, what do you thought? What's next for, for, well, I mean, we, there's no way on earth for us to tell what's next for, next for Kobe Kingston <laughs> in this <laughs> company. But, um, I don't think he'll ever touch a belt again. Oh. Um, and what, what do you make of like, you know, the, the moment that he had and also, you know, the way it ended? It shouldn't have ended like that, period. Like, it was it, seven seconds. That's bullshit, right? Um, and I know people were like, well, what would you rather see? We'd rather see him get his ass with whatever else. No, nah, man. Like, just have it be a typical Brock match. I don't think anybody was any, under any um, illusions that it was going to be anything other than Brock Lesnar winning the title. So, like, we just figured we'd get a good-ass match, and then we can, you know, Brock loses, and then, like, he walks off, and then Kofi's in the middle of the ring, off air, you see the YouTube video of him getting stand ovation because that dude was a, you know, a really great... Im- that dude's been a really great employee and ambassador for WWE for a long time. And he got his run and his run was over and he f- went out on his sword. He didn't even get it. I mean, he went out on his back. Sure. But that wasn't the way that, you know, that's not the way that like you have, that's not the way you do that. Right. Or that's not the way most people would do that. Right. You have someone that is beloved. You have someone that is respected, and you expect them if they're going to get their ass kicked, they're going to get your ass kicked. But like, at least let them go out there, at least get a hope spot in, and at least let them entertain the fans. They didn't get a chance to do that. Yeah, right? and, like if, if that and, had been and, and, and it's funny, you all these people talking about you know stylistically and trying to convince themselves and talk themselves into whatever happened. Like yeah, like come on, man. I just saw Finn Balor like have an electric match with Lesnar right. at um. You know, like, you know how much Royal big, Rumble. You know how much bigger Kofi Kingston is than AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, and Finn Balor. That right. doesn't fly. It's bullshit. Correct. He so wrestle. like, hell, we've seen him wrestling before. Yeah, and just gonna say it. It's like you know, that's how that's how they ended up treating this black man. Well, you know, and it's just like. It's one more thing with WWE, and it's like it, it, it was funny um, <laughs> when, when we heard about that. It was like, oh, yeah, at least AEW has a uh, Scorpio Sky now. Um, <laughs> you know, all, all, all the stuff, all the cap that was going on about oh, WWE God. being the black company, and and all this stuff that was going on, and it's like they ended up treating Kobe Kingston horribly. So, so, so where's this energy now? Like, I, I, you know, I, it's. It's unfortunate. Uh, thank you, Kofi. So, um, besides that, man, like, you know, I think the Cain Velasquez shit is whack. I'm not into it at all. I, I, I could care less. It's Crown Jewel. Like, what? Yeah. Whatever. So, it's it, Crown Jewel. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, Wednesdays. Uh, make sure, uh, as Floyd said, y'all stay vigilant. You know, <laughs> oh tell your friends <laughs> to watch <laughs> AEW. <laughs> I ain't gonna fake with him no more, you know. It, like I, I'm flying the flag. Let him know it's, oh, it's all leading this hole. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, speaking of that, that's like the year, well, almost like the one year anniversary of Derek Lewis. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, so I was like the one year anniversary. That's or, funny. Or maybe it was a couple days ago, but like Derek Lewis going out there, you know, like my balls is hot and you know, uh USA in this hole and all that shit. So yeah, um Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess congratulations to that. Oh, no oh well let's uh I think we have a little bit of uh stardom talk, so do you wanna go ahead and hit that? You wanna go ahead and do it? Hit the music. Okay, so um, this was the f- the only show between the five star and the uh, the uh, Goddess of Storm Tag League. Uh, so, um, white belt match. You have Arisa Oshiki versus Avery. Um, okay, match. Like, it, I mean, this was if if you heard me complain about Arisa Oshiki and her matches before, then you, I mean, you've heard it all before. This is like. There literally, I don't think there was one single move she did that did not involve her feet or her knees. So, um, she won though. Um, kicked her head off, which what you expect. Uh, she wins. Uh, the real highlight of this show was the high speed match. Riho in her first title offense of the uh, high speed match versus Def Yamasan. This was on Sunday, and then she won the AEW title on Wednesday. So she had a hell of a week. Um, it was another. Five minute banger, sub five minute banger, just like on par with the Hazuki stuff. This was the best match I've ever seen. Uh, Riho in um, it just it just shows you like even though I think she's only uh, she's better than I even thought she was. Like I thought she was just a good wrestler. Now I know she's a really good wrestler. So that's cool. Um, what we never really talked about. What do you think of the women's match? Uh, a uh, woman's title match. Yeah, so AEW. at first, I, I there there were a couple like you know rough patches in the match, but like mm-hmm. whenever Nyla Rose starts taking bumps, like I think people just like get into it. And mm-hmm. I'm not you know a fan of like the strikes Rio throws because I think they're like weak. And I think you mentioned like uh, with Nyla's like strikes, like you feel like she's holding back. I immediately thought the same thing. I'm mm-hmm. um, like like she's like she's trying so hard not to hurt someone. Um, you know, but ultimately, I got really into it, just like everyone else in the building. And as, as those big bumps started happening, like you could tell that you know they had that Joshi influence, like at, you know finishing a match strong down the stretch. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, Rio being the first champion, I was like, I was fine with either of them winning. I, I didn't really have a preference. Um, Same, that, but it was like you know. Real, real main it begins. <laughs> okay, so um, after I saw tweets from, um, I believe, yeah, from Nyla's girlfriend, I mm-hmm. believe it's her girlfriend. Um, I rewatched the match, and I happened to get a copy of the match that uh, that I guess was the foreign feed. So I got the um, the commercial break. Oh, you got the knee. I got the yes, I got a commercial break part. That match is a lot more smooth than I th- originally watched it. I don't know if it was, I don't know what the reason why I thought it was like, sl- uh, it, I thought I thought it was off at the beginning of the match. It wasn't. It's was fine. So I rewatched the match, saw the the knee spot, and um, like it was, I thought it was a better match on the on that feed than the commercial break thing that we end up getting. So mm. like. At first, I thought it was like a three and a half star match. Now I probably think it's like a three, a high three and a half, maybe even three and three quarters. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I. So my my opinion changed when I think even more. I was even more impressed. So uh, that's what really all I had to say on that. And then you throw in, but even then, like this, the uh, if you are a person that has stardom access to stardom. This Def Yamasan five minute match is still better. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> I, I mean, it's it just out. you know you've seen these high star matches like they, they are yes. high speed matches. They don't fuck around. So <laughs> um, then also, uh, uh, you know, I always talk about stardom with like their multi woman tag match they throw together. It was Queen's Quest versus Odeo Tai, and it was uh, Leo Onizaki, a pin eater, plus Azumi who just turned seventeen the other day. Man, so, getting old. Yeah, so now she is, you know, in consideration Almost watched. for... Yeah, so now she's in consideration for 
one of the greatest 17 year old wrestlers of all time and no longer just discussed by the 16 year old category. She's now graduated to, you know, she's leveled up. So Leo and Azumi and, Azumi and B and Momo versus Jamie and Andres Miyagi and Kagetsu and Hazuki. This was the best multi woman tag match they've had since. Probably Odeo Tai won the trios tag match in uh, Osaka in, I want to say that's July. Um, this is like a four-star match, maybe three and three quarters. Uh, they were very crisp. They were very fast. Uh, they were moving so fast that you that you didn't know what was coming next, and it was great. Um, they had a lot of intricate stuff in it. You know, uh, <laughs> Kagetsu is a huge Izumi mark, even, so... And, you know, mm-hmm. Hazuki is jealous of that, so they played into that. Um, they also played in the fact that, like, you know, you have uh, Odeo Tai, who are the heels, the lovable scamps, and you have the, the tweeners at the Queen Quest, but you also have Jamie and B, who are going to be, t- you know, be Team Gaijin. <laughs> so they get, they shake each other's hands, and all three people on both sides are like, what the fuck, B, what the fuck, J- uh, Jamie? Uh so yeah, it was it was it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, but as usual in stardom, if you see a pin eater on one side and you don't know see what a pin eater on the other, you know eventually that pin eater gonna get isolated and pinned. Leo Onizaki went out there and, and got put on her back. So 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 like you see the pin eater is kind of like when they used to make sure Steph Curry got put on the switch. Yeah. Um, yes, in the, the finals. Mark. Yes. Yep. Like we gonna remember, find the mark. If you remember, uh. Oh, uh, what's it called? Oh, if you remember Waterboy, when mm-hmm. uh, during the I think it was Sugar Bowl supposed to be in, and they need an onside kick, and you know you know who that kicker was, right? Mm-mm. That kicker is D'Angelo Barksdale from the Wild. Oh my God! Now that you mentioned that, I watched I watched their Waterboy earlier this year, and I was like, wait a fucking two wire references in this show. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. But just like when he's going onside kick, I gotta find a bitch and he's find a dude that's shaking in his boots is on you know at the front line on the onside kick on the return team, he kicks it to him. Like that's exactly what it is when it comes to these pin eaters and start them in tag matches amongst the factions. Like they get isolated and you're just like, All right, oh they in the ring, when is it happening? And then, you know, there's typically two on both sides, so you it's all it's just a matter of time. So that was fun and it's also like typical it's also good because like the right team wins. Right people are protected. It's 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 just good. It's, it's just common sense booking. Is you know so man. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. So, but those are, those are the three top matches of that show. So the next um, sets of matches that start. There aren't any match shows this week. It is the week after when they start the tag league stuff. So um, I'm sure I'm sure I'll give you the updates on some of that stuff. I'll probably now that that shit with Sunny and the uploader and the English side is all together. I'm sure it's gonna be. Co- Consistent um, regularity, so I'll be able to give constant updates, opposed to like speaking, halfway point report, uh, reports or whatever. So yeah. Speaking of Sunny, is Sunny Ono gonna be managing the Kabuki Warriors shortly <laughs> uh, due to uh, his association with Eric Bischoff? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're gonna be on SmackDown, so I'll, so I'll, I don't think so. I don't think so. Move them to Raw, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to think, like who who could be their manager if Paige's not gonna be their manager? <sighs> Because you know, uh, I'm not. I'm not saying they need a manager, but Vince thinks they need a manager. So who is Vince going to pick to be their manager eventually, or new manager if Paige will show up? My God, they, she he wouldn't do Lacey Evans, right? Oh Jesus fucking Christ! That would make me so mad. <laughs> because I, because I think I think they're trying to make her a wrestler really badly. So it's, yeah, they're going to give at least another year. And I think I think she's uh, uh, now. Now that you say that, the real answer is Alexa Bliss. But Alexa Bliss is now fighting them. Yeah, yeah. That, um, would, that should be the answer. Yeah. Zelina Vega, maybe. Add to the stable. You know, <laughs> the she, 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 she keeps some foreigns on her. She yep, keeps some yep. She keeps some foreigns. <laughs> Collect the international, you know, international work. You so, know. so is Zelina's international army? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. I think that's the end of the show, right? I don't think, I don't think there's anything else after that, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I think you know. Oh man, apparently Tyson Fury sized the fuck out of Braun Strowman. He says, "I'm a world heavyweight champion. How many heavyweight championships have you won?" Well, it's a, it's a, it's a worked sport, sir. 
Um, Looks like the whole locker room cleared out, and they did a big pull bar brawl. I watched it. Um, I just have it up on mute. So Tuesday nights, they're coming out with AW Dark, which they will be airing the matches that were that happened the same night as uh, on Wednesdays. The following Tuesdays at seven o'clock on AW YouTube channels. Looks like this week they got um, Darby Allen versus Shima. We got a tag team match between Britt Baker and Allie against Penelope Ford and B Priestley. Um, they also have the Jurassic Express versus SCU. And then they have Private Party teaming up with the best friends against the Lucha Bros and um, the Hybrid 2, as they're being called, which is Jack Evans and, and Helico. The so, Bandu look. Boys. Yeah, looking the, forward to the checking Surge that AG out. Boys, the Monster Drink Boys, the the, the Neon, the Highlighter Boys, yeah. um, Team Red Bull. Night one, Scorpio Sky goes singles, like team, that. Team Axe Body Spray. Yep. So uh, looking forward to seeing uh, what Scorpio does in uh, singles action. So uh, it was the conversation we had a couple weeks ago gets remedied, uh, kind of off rip. So. We'll see where it goes because it looks like they're making some more moves in that direction as I'm looking on Twitter right now. Uh, Chris Bay, haven't heard of this gentleman, but he has a lot of title belts in his picture and a picture with Cody Rhodes he just uploaded. Hmm. So we'll see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I think we, I think that's everything, right? Anything else? Yeah, don't watch the WWE. <laughs> if, 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 <laughs> if it makes you miserable. If it makes you God if if it makes you if you make makes you miserable, go ahead and get that shit up. Drop that narcotic. Like you don't need that shit in your life. Like you know, like <laughs> y'all already know we're not watching Crown Jewel or we're not covering Crown Jewel on on this show. So uh, I don't know when the next time we're gonna be talking about uh, the WWE unless there's just a huge story that happens. Which you know, uh, knowing this company, something will happen. Well, you know, like I still, if I hear a review or whatever else about like something was good or something was horrific or whatever else i'll i'll check it out but like the you know the 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 nondescript to mediocre that's just stuff we'll ignore yeah um but yeah uh be there wednesday night stay vigilant what the floyd <laughs> <Come> on, <man. laughs> that's the end of the show be sure to rate us on whatever app you're using listen this to uh Tell the folks about the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Be sure to check out our friends at Powerslam.tv, the sponsor of the show. If you're a fan of independent pro wrestling, they have over 5,000 hours of footage from all over the world. You can use the code Social Suplex to get your free month's trial. Don't forget to visit uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Social Suplex to pick up some Social Suplex Podcast Network merchandise. Be sure to check out the other shows on Social Suplex uh, Podcast Network on Sundays. Most of the time, we have One Nation Radio. On uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, we have Keep It A Strong Style. On Wednesdays, we have the Ricky and Clive Wrestling Podcast, where I'm sure they're just going just, to be fun. And then uh, every other Wednesdays, we have Grown Wash This Shit. On Thursdays, we we have Get In The Ring. And then on Saturdays, we have All Things Elite. Thanks for listening. Oh, Rich, there was something you wanted to add? Yeah, Free Ray Mysterio. Oh, I thought you were going to say bloody guts. See ya!